ladies, congratulations. You made it to the end of the study. Live unoffended. Can you believe it? You made it all the way to the end. I'm so proud of you for getting all of that work done, studying the word of God. And I pray that it has grown you and matured you and given you hope. Hope that even though you think you're a certain way, the offender, the offended, the mediator, no matter which way you think you are, that you will, can grow in grace and love and forgiveness towards others. And we can grow in showing others that we value them. Isn't that the key? Isn't that the root of what we all want? We want to be known. We want to be loved. We want to be valued. And when we feel less than that, we tend to react, right? And so maybe this study has helped you with how you respond, how you react. Maybe the words of scripture shared in this study will help you grow as a peacemaker. May you love others well, and may you constantly point them to Jesus. May you forgive the offenses that come against you, remembering how Jesus has forgiven you. So today we're going to talk about, well, how do we do this? How do we implement it? And I gave you a lot of pointers in lesson five, but I just want to finish by going through the armor of God. Are you surprised that we're going through the armor of God? I know you're not. You're not surprised at all. So Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Okay, so let's just go through the pieces of armor real quick. If you want to do a study on it, I would highly recommend The Armor of God by Priscilla Shire. Some of the things I'll say through here are quoted from here, and so I just want to give her the credit due. And if you need a study to do after this to protect yourself even more from being offended and getting offended, then that's a great study to do. So let's talk about the belt of truth first. The belt of truth protects your core. Think about it. Your center is your core. That's where you get your balance from. I used to be a ballet dancer long, long time ago, and your balance all comes from your core. If you can hold that together, you can hold a pose for a very long time, right? So this is a core piece of armor. And what does it represent in our faith? It, it represents our faith in Jesus Christ as our Messiah and as our Savior. That's our core. That's our center. That's what's going to keep our balance in this world. It holds us together and gives us freedom to move. This piece gives us stability. Okay, the breastplate of righteousness is next. What does this piece of armor protect? It protects your heart, right? But it is a heavy piece. So if you think of a Roman soldier, it is a heavy piece that sets into the belt. That's why the belt is listed first. This piece of armor sets into the belt, and the belt that is our faith, right, holds it secure. It holds it secure so that it can protect our heart. Remember we talked about letting our hearts not be hearts of stone, but be hearts of flesh. This is the piece that protects that. The, we want our hearts to have tender places that God can access so that we can experience his true love. Our hearts are the source of life, our life to the body. This can symbolize our integrity and the outflow of our character. In Isaiah 59, 17, God himself is described as putting on a breastplate of righteousness when he goes forth to bring justice. 
Okay, so the next piece is feet fit it with the righteousness of the gospel of peace. Okay, so this gives us freedom to walk forward in the security of the gospel and the peace it provides. Okay, so I want you to picture this with me. If any of you have small children and they have Legos and they're left out in the all over the floor in the middle of the room and the lights are out and you're barefoot you are gonna experience a new kind of pain as you walk through that room, right? When you step on a Lego, it's not fun, I have done it. But if we have shoes on and we can maneuver our way through, or better yet, if we turn the light on in the room with our shoes on, we can now masterfully move through that room, right? And that is what Jesus does for us. He brings us out of the dark and into the light. He exposes the Legos and keeps us safe as we walk through. There is freedom to walk forward in the security of the gospel and the peace it provides. The next piece of armor I really like, the shield of faith. Okay, so this shield of faith, one of the things the soldiers used to do is wet it down so that this way when the fiery arrows would come at them, not only it would extinguish those arrows. So if an arrow went into the shield, it would extinguish the flame because they had wet it down, okay? The second part of the shield that I really like is it takes action. You have to pick it up. Just if you have a shield on the floor, it's doing you no good. You need to pick it up and hold it up. Right, so there's an action with that. There's an action in our walk with the Lord. We have a part to play. We have to open the word of God, which you have done over these past weeks. And so good job, you are picking up your shield of faith. And the last part of this shield, which I thought was really cool, in um, my NIV Chronological Bible study notes, it said that the shield covered from the shoulders to mid-thigh, and that a group of soldiers could interlock their shields like roof tiles and march together protect it. Not only does the shield protect you, but it protects the person next to you. Ladies, we are not meant to do this alone. We are meant to live in community. We are meant to live in fellowship with one another. And so we need to do our best to live at peace with others so that we can interlock our shields of faith and be stronger and united and be a united force against the devil's attacks against us. The next piece is the helmet of salvation. This protects our head, obviously, therefore protecting the mind, right? And so now I'm going to quote the Armor of God by Priscilla Shire. And she said, strongholds are torn down by the word of God. Amen. Amen. In our last week of study, I briefly mentioned this analogy. I just kind of flew through it, but it's something I love to teach ladies about, and it's the stop sign, okay? So we need to stop a thought when it comes in and replace it with a godly thought. Whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, if anything is excellent, admirable, or praiseworthy, think on these things, right? So we have to learn to take that thought captive and replace it. So the quicker we can stop that thought and replace it with a biblical thought, thought, the better we will be. And this is a practice we have to repeat over and over and over again. And it will help you. Okay. It will help you. The sword of the spirit is the next one. This is the word of God. And again, she says, it is the only offensive and defensive weapon. It was a small dagger that could be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I love the example of Jesus because when he was attacked by the devil, how did he fight back? With the word of God. And you know what that means for us? That means we need to memorize scripture and we need to have it in our heads so that when the attack comes, we can stop it and replace it with the word of God, right? And so in the last thing that it says is pray and be alert. Pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Be alert and keep on praying, right? Act in wisdom, ladies. There is evil in the world. There is. And sometimes people just say it's good, but no, there is evil in the world, right? And we need to pray and be alert and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so just like I reminded you in the study, I want to remind you again the words of Habakkuk and Jude. What did they have in common? They both had in common that 
God is the one who does it. He is the one that enables us. He is the one that will enable you to restore relationships. Wait on him and his timing. Allow him to do the work he needs to do in all of our lives, in the people all around us. He will work. He will give you strength. He will enable you. Seek peace and pursue it. And finally, we need to put all of this in practice, right? So just like we started, we need to end in Romans. So let's just reread 14 through 18. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. We have to leave room for God. Are we ready to live in harmony with others? To not be proud or conceited? Are we ready to not repay evil for evil, even though that comes naturally? but instead do what is right. If any of this is possible, then we are to live at peace with others as much as it depends on us. So what do you think? Do you think it is possible to live unoffended? What's your main takeaway from this study? What are you going to put in practice? Do you remember the pottery store analogy? Remember the offender? Ooh. We don't need these big bags, ladies. As we walk into that crowded pottery store, we want to replace this big bag with something that's more contained. We can be less offensive. We don't need to knock all the pottery over, right? The pottery store owner, you need to clean up your pottery. Don't have it stacked on top of one another that it will be easily broken and easily knocked over. We need to clean up what's valuable to us. The traumas in our lives that are valuable, that we hold on to, we need to clean up and organize so it's less easily broken. Okay, and mediators, your role is so important. We want you to help us, even though it's gonna be hot and refining it is going to make us stronger in our relationships. So what do you think? Did we accomplish the goals of this study? Remember, did we learn to be less offensive? Did we learn how to be less easily offended? Did you learn how to forgive? How about when and how to mediate? Is it possible to live unoffended? That is up to you and me. It is possible to live with purpose purpose to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When that is your purpose, do not be deterred. Focus on the prize of heaven and the things of this world will fall away. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you that we can dig into your word and how to live healthy, restored relationships. We thank you that you were our example, that you would send Jesus Christ to die for us, to restore our relationship with you because we have broken it because we are sinful. We praise you for your goodness and your love and your mercy and your kindness in our life. And I pray that the ladies on the other side of the screen would extend your kindness and your love to all those that they meet, whether those people deserve it or not. May they extend forgiveness like you have forgiven us. We praise you for the work you have done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. 